This past week we've had over six inches of rain hit almost all of our fields, which means today's project is we gotta go check all of our intakes at all of our fields to make sure they're not plugged. Coming up to the first intake we gotta check here. We're in about maybe six inches of standing water here on the spade. Luckily I got my water proof boots on to get us up to the intake. Now comes the fun part of sticking your hand into this water and just start pulling out corn stalk residue from last year that's getting trapped over the cover on our intake. So as you can see, we're already starting to get the water to go down. I just gotta keep pouring more and more of this corn stalk residue out of the tile. It's just small pieces of corn stalk residue like this that gets built up on our intake cover that really can stop the water from going down the tile. That's kind of why we got the tire around it to help some of the residue like this from going down into it. But when the water gets so high, it doesn't matter how high the tire is, it just goes right down. The water is finally flowing down that intake. I came out to the outside edge of the ponding, show you guys some of the corn stalk residue that gets washed all with the heavy rain down to the lowest spot of the field where the water needs to exit. And that's usually the spot where we have intakes in our field like this one. And the reason my farm has tile intakes like this one here is because where I farm here in Southwest Minnesota, we usually struggle with too much moisture in the growing season. When you have that much moisture and add that into our heavy black soils we have up here, you see results like this where there's nowhere for the water to go. It can't get drained through the soil naturally. So we install tile intakes at the surface of the soil to help create sort of a drain when we have excess moisture like we do today for the water to escape. So we're gonna let that one run behind me and we're gonna go back in the truck, drive around the outside edge of the field and see what other intakes look like that might be plugged from the road. There's a spot up here where I parked with the truck where there's a fair amount of ponding water as well, which is right next to one of the field driveways where I parked, which not surprisingly, since this is where we come in and out of the field, drain harvest with all of our big heavy loads of our harvested crop, to bring back home to the bend site. Just having those large semi-trailers and the grain cart coming back and forth here just really compacts the soil and takes out that air pocket in the soil structure, which causes a lot of ponding water, which we have at, quite honestly, a lot of our field driveways right now that look like this. Going by the other driveway of that field, and as you can tell, there's a lot of standing water there too, just from the compaction. Just made it to a new farm and another plug tile here. We're about two miles south of that other farm. You can tell there's a lot more standing water here at this intake, and the water is significantly deeper here as well. It's now time for the fun part where I risk my arm, stick it inside the tire and try to find the cover that we have on the intake. Looks like here it is. Wasn't plugged very bad. The water isn't going down any, which tells me that the water level is just this high. So it's gonna be a few days before this big pond here goes away, unfortunately, but there's nothing more we can do here. Because it's gonna be a good three or four days before some of that water there starts to subside, when the creek levels go down and the tile eventually will start to drain, I know for a fact that we're gonna end up replanting some beans in here since they were already planted before the rain, but because it's so much water sitting on top of them for probably gonna be five days by the time the water goes down, we'll end up replanting some here. Just got to another field and fortunately, there's only one plugged intake out at this 160 acre field. We have road access down at that side, road access down over there. Of course, the plugged intake is a half mile out in that direction. So now we got to walk, which wouldn't be so bad, but because it's so wet out here, I'm carrying around an extra 10 pounds of mud on my boots. I'm coming up on the spot where you can start to see all the ponding water we'd have down here. Looks like it's backed up on both the intakes, so we're gonna have to check them both when we get there. Again, here, this is worse than some of the other fields. You can see all the corn stalk residue that just gets washed. and basically creates like a sandbar beach around all the water that's sitting at these intakes that we're about to clean out. The water at this tile is the highest one that we visited because it's already right at the top of my boots. So the boots are starting to fill with water. We only got another five feet to go and hopefully this one starts to drain 
and it's just plugged up. We made it. This is why we keep, ooh, I squatted down a little too far. One of the reasons why we keep a flag at every intake so it's easier to locate when it backfills with water. And again, we stick our hand down here and the cover is not plugged. The water level is just again, this high at this field. Because I'm already out in the middle of the field and covered in water, there's this other intake that's not far from that last one where the water level is too high. And I'm almost certain that this one ain't plugged either. The water level is just that high where this farm is. Cover's already off on this one. Shove our hand down here. Yep. Water level's just unfortunately that high. That's what six inches of rain will do to you. Pretty safe to say all the beans that we had planted here in probably a three acre area where the water's still sitting, those are junk, not gonna grow. So if this water ever does go down, and it's about six inches deep down there at the lowest point, if it does go down, we'll come in here with some earlier maturity beans just so we raise a crop and don't just have a bunch of weeds here to go to seed for next year. Started making my walk back from the pond in the field when I saw this little guy, little frog, jumping around out in the middle of a field. You don't see that very often, usually not a good sign of what's to come. On the bright side, in the spots of the field that didn't get drowned out, the soybeans are just starting to want to poke through. So once we get a little bit warmer temperatures here in the coming days, all of our soybeans should start coming up. Here's another downfall is you gotta put your muddy boots inside the truck to drive from field to field. It's really just a shame. This field here got just a little bit less rain. We can see just on the other side of that little berm right there, there's an intake that we're gonna pull into the driveway and walk down to check. This was the first soybean field that we planted. You can see these soybeans are already starting to pop up and are looking really good. It also shows the different soil types at this farm here. It's, it's not dry by any stretch, but it's definitely not wet. Now you'll see once we get up a little farther how things will change. You can tell because the ground is still shiny back here, so it's holding more moisture and the fact I'm just sinking in a little bit more with the boots. This one here is a prime example of what a plugged intake cover looks like. You can see it's all built up with mud and cornstalk residue. If I go ahead and pull that off, we got water flowing down again. Water's entering the tile. Unfortunately, most of the water sitting out here has kind of got to come in this direction, but we're definitely getting some out of here. This residue that plugs up this cover that sits on top of that intake that causes the issues. But here, the problem is the water's ponding a little bit farther back than where the intake is at this field. So we'll leave the cover off. Hopefully it'll help drain some of that water, but I don't think it's gonna get it all since we're not in a good spot with the intake. It's instances like this, we often think it'd be nice to have either like an eight or a 12 row planter that we could put behind another tractor to do small replant stuff like this. Cause it's kind of a pain bringing the big 24 row out here just to stub in what is maybe a half an acre of soybeans. The next field we're headed to now had the most amount of rain out of the past three rain events coming in right around six and a half inches for the week. So I'll show you guys what the mess looks like over there. An interesting thing to point out is one inch of rain over one acre of ground is 27,000 gallons of water. Since this is an 80 acre field, that means I need to take that 27,000 gallons per acre times six and a half inches times 80 acres to come up with a grand total of over 14 million gallons of rainwater dumped on this field alone this week. Some of that rainwater, like down here in the corner where the elevation is low, is just naturally here. And since the tile lines are all plugged up or filled with water down to the cricks, that means we result in having water backing up into our fields like we do here. The tile that's supposed to take the water out of this ditch is right here at this tire. But I can tell you it's not the problem at the intake, it's out the outlet since we got water all in this ditch and I already checked to make sure that there isn't any stuff blocking the intake. As I'm walking out in this cornfield to check another one of our tile intakes, I'm noticing one other thing that the rain did that I'm not loving. It is now washed up some more rocks to the top. 
So once we finish planting for the year, let's come out to all the fields and do my least favorite job on the farm of picking up the rocks. Getting down here closer in this draw and it's looking a lot uglier than it did from the road. I did a little bit of digging to see if I could even find a corn seed or a plant that's coming up. But more than likely, those all got washed away with the rain. The water is actually coming out of the intake and then going back in this direction, back down to that pond and filling up that portion of the field. So that is definitely not what I like to see. And that's a sign that our outlet is more than full. There is one bright spot of coming down to this intake and that's that I found something that you guys might want to see. Before I show you guys, remember how I said the last two growing seasons, we've been completely bone dry. Well, sure enough, after the six and a half inch rain we had this week, all of our bones out in our field that were dry have been washed up. You might think I drug that dirty bone halfway across the field just for that last clip, but I didn't. I found it in between our property, the neighbor's property, so I'm sure some raccoon or coyote drug it out there and left it there. Who knows what that might mean for my farm for the rest of the growing season in June and July. But if you want to be a part of it, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below. No, seriously, go hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one.